I'm Jamie with Chegg Tutors. Today I want to talk to you about the concept in psychology called working memory, defined as the storage and management of information for a short period of time. This is very different than long-term memory, although the connections between the two are still being worked out. Here's an example from the WISC-4 and intelligence tests. They might ask you Repeat the back the following sequence, starting with letters in alphabetic order, then the numbers in numeric order. A, 3, B, 7, Q, R, 12, 11, Q, S, T, V, Z, 5. How's that for repeating back? Can you do it? This is a test of working memory, how we can juggle things in our minds at the same time and get accurate and consistent and fast results. Now, working memory impacts all sorts of things, from our ability to follow directions to problem solving, like multi-step problems, including math word problems. Really, fundamentally, it's our ability to deal with more than one piece of information at a time. Miller, in 1956, says we can store seven plus or minus two pieces of information in working memory at one time. This suggests that we should categorize things into higher categories. Instead of saying the revolution occurred in 1776 and the Constitution was signed in 1787, we want to try and create a bigger category, like the American Revolution, so that we can store seven categories like that rather than seven pieces of individual information. This is how people become experts. Instead of storing basic information or basic facts like dates or names, you categorize things into more and more abstract categories. And then you're still using your working memory, but your seven pieces of information cover a lot more detail. Current research focuses on can our capacity for working memory be extended? Is it really limited to seven items? And how is working memory different from long-term memory? What's the difference in the brain via fMRI studies? Or what's the difference as it's applied to learning? Certain things are deeply affected by working memory. For example, if you have Alzheimer's, working memory tends to go down significantly, as well as processing time. Students who have learning disabilities often have problems with working memory. They may have problems following multi-step directions, solving word problems, or even remembering directions that were spoken. We don't want math or problem-solving tests to become reading tests, for, but for a lot of people with working memory issues, it's not that they can't do the math, it's that they can't process all of that information at once. So working memory is a psychological concept, but it is also a concept that has great bearing on education that we should all know about. Thanks, and see you next time.